y'all it's hey bit crafty hope and welcome i am working in one of my little junk journals today so i'm gonna walk you through this i thought what i wanted to do was stick with a fairly neutral color palette and some gold so i i don't know it hit me sometime over the weekend that i have this gold metallic medium from liquitex and I, I'm trying to remember, I bought it to do, put it in a, like a fine liner and that'll come into play later. I think that's what I bought it for. I don't know. Um, I just have it. And it hit me over the weekend that it could be used as an actual medium to glue things down. So I did test it out on some other just random papers in the craft room. It worked. Things stuck down. So I thought, well, let's see what happens in a, a journal. So this is the journal. <laughs> Now, I'm going to go ahead and admit that in the end, most of this gold is going to be lost with um, all the other stuff I'm going to throw at this page because I throw a little bit of all of my favorite things at this page. <laughs> and it ends up, y'all, I really love this page. I really, really do. So this is just a little junk journal. The page I'm working from looks like it's out of some book. I don't know. Can't even tell you. But I decided to go ahead and stick down some other book pages and, uh, yeah, phone book and reading books and I don't even know. Most, again, neutral, neutral, neutral. I'm just doing things that are black print on plain white or aged paper or newsprint-ish paper. And just trying to break up the writing that's in the background. Get some variety of textures and and really by texture I mean like just the 2d different fonts and things like that and y'all look how pretty that gold is it is kind of cool it's it doesn't work great as a medium I don't recommend it for your everyday medium um but it works fine so I got all that down decided to add a little extra texture with a hand carved stamp and some distress oxide in rusty hinge and again, I kind of knew some of the things I wanted to play with coming into this. And I wanted things to melt and meld and drip and drizzle and be messy and grungy. And so that I'm using the Distress Oxide because I know that other media that I put on top of it will make it blur and mess up because it is not uh, color. What do you call it? I don't know. It's water soluble. <laughs> So there I've got some instant coffee in a little cup and I added some water to it, probably too much because it's super juicy. And I'm using a big fat brush and I've grabbed this stencil that I am, I really just want to get, I've seen other people do stenciling with coffee and I believe that they tend to leave it once they put the coffee down and let it dry. Y'all, I didn't. It's just, yeah, we're just going to make a coffee mess here. So I, I'm, you know, definition of crazy here. I'm just going to keep painting it on here and not get any kind of definite shape to it. It is messing with that distress oxide in the background like I want it to. And I'm already losing some of my gold. So once I got, you know, some coffee on there, basically, it's not in any particular shape. I dried that and I grabbed that same stamp and some Liquitex. Liquitex Basics Gesso. Ooh. And then I've got the silicone spreader, I guess is the best way, um, that I'm going through a different part of that, that stencil to just get some shapes on here. I, I, I wanted texture on here. I wanted layers and layers of grungy texture. So I've got the paper I put down and then the stamps and the coffee and now some gesso and it really doesn't matter if there's any kind of definitive shapes or anything for me I knew I wanted to kind of play with the idea of watery inky texture so that's what I'm doing I lose that in here in a little bit I get a little frustrated with myself and a decision I make here in just a little bit but I um yeah You'll see, but I fix it. And like I said, this page ends up being really nice. All right, so I got some of that stamp, that stencil down and decided it just wasn't enough. I wanted more. That was really, I wanted to see how much texture I could get with just gesso. 
So it, and it's this spreader is not the best thing. I'm not holding the stencils real steady. This is not the best way to stencil if you want a crisp, clear <laughs> image. Because yeah, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted I wanted a mess, and I'm totally making a mess because I'm disregarding anything else I've put down on this page, and just smashing into it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm I am all good with it. So when get, I think that is that the last one now I'm going to do a little bit more and then realize that there's gesso all over that stencil. So I'm just going to like, yeah, press the stencil down. <laughs> yep. On my page, just like that and move things around. Yeah. Let it get, kind of get everywhere. And then I'm going to dry it real quick. I did clean my stencils uh, to get that gesso off with a baby wipe so that it doesn't mess them up too much. Now, I recently got this pot of Ranger Crackle Paste, and I played with it a little just to test it out, and it's time for it to go into something. So I'm not going to let it go bad like I let my Deco Art Media Crackle Paste go bad. So I'm going to use this stuff, and I've got a palette knife, and I'm randomly just kind of spreading this on the page. And then, y'all, I'm going to walk away. The best way to get your crackle to crackle is to let it air dry. Do not, you can heat dry it, but your crackles just aren't going to be the best. So I totally recommend letting it air dry. So that's what I did once I cleaned off my palette knife and everything. And y'all can see I'm already losing a lot of my gold in there. It's it's in there, but it's it's kind of hidden in the background. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. Now I've got my Stabilo all in black and I'm making these plus signs on the page. I wanted something dark. This was all with all that gesso and crackle paste. It was feeling um, a little too light and bright. So gesso is great for darkening it up. And I'm taking a fairly small round paintbrush but with a lot of water on it. I kind of wanted that stabilo to drip down the page but I wasn't using quite enough water and that's okay I, I can play with that technique another time y'all I keep saying that's okay and it really is this is what art journaling and junk journals are for or getting in there and playing and gets getting some of that um creativity kind of busting out this is the step that bothered me so I sprayed this distress oxide in cracked pistachio and it Y'all, it just made the whole page a cracked pistachio. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of it with a baby wipe. I don't get much of it. Uh, I told y'all at the beginning I wanted to keep this neutral. And that was the plan. And I, I don't know. Something in me was like, but you need some color. And out of habit, I just grabbed that and went for it. And it wasn't really what I wanted to do. But it ends up being fine. So here's my fine liner little squeeze bottle that I've got, oh, I've got some of that gold medium in it. I've got some gold acrylic paint and I've got some water in there. And I just circled several of those plus signs with it. And then I'm going to use my regular white fine liner, which has some fluid acrylic uh, in white and airbrush medium in white. So... And once I circled the ones in white that I did, I wanted it to have a little bit of a scribbly texture. So off of the circles that I made for it, I'm going to scribble just a little bit. Just in different directions, different amounts of scribble. I don't know. It, it, felt, it felt right. So I went for it. Now I'm going to dry that. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and start searching for my focal and my sentiments. So I went through a couple different things. I cut that out because so, y'all don't want to see me searching for words. Um, but I found this large print novel page that had the words um, let out a long breath, which just spoke to me. Um, I had nothing else in mind for it. I wanted to feel simple and freeing, which is what this page was supposed to be, was to play with some different things and kind of get that creativity out, like letting out a long breath. So I think that's why that kind of called to me. And I am sorting, sorting, y'all see, sorting through this stack of all kinds of like focal things. And finally, I find this stamped image of a face. 
And I know I stamped that with stays on, so I know it is permanent. And so I can add water or whatever to it and it will stay and that's going to be good in a minute. And I decided to stack it with a piece of fabric here. Um, I think that's just like some muslin or something. I'm not positive. But I'm going to fray the edges a bit more. Something made me want more frayed edges. You don't really see this in the end. But I, I had to do it. So I'm fraying, fraying, fraying. And yeah. I'm pulling that out thread by thread, y'all. It's, yeah. I don't know what was wrong with me. And it's still the, um... The face doesn't quite pop off of that, so I'm going to grab that Distress Oxide and Rusty Hinge and just go around the face a little. I got some on the image, but it kind of helped with the grunge of it, so I went with it. And I'm going to activate that, just kind of let it blur a little on the edges and get it a little bit more grungy, and that was perfect. But I, with that fabric, I felt like the fabric needed something additional and so I decided to go grab some embroidery floss. And I'm just going to get some black embroidery floss. Um, I start with a whole spool of it there. And I decide, oh look, in my needle book here, I have a, I have a needle already threaded with black floss. So I'm going to use that. And I start by tacking down one corner of this um, picture to the fabric. And then, yeah, it gets a little fiddly in here. I'm going to fast forward through some of it, but I'm basically going to make plus signs on here. Since I've got those big black plus signs on the background, I thought that that would be nice to continue those kind of through since I'm using the black again with the embroidery floss. So I start by tacking down the corner of the picture to the fabric, and then I'm going to make a couple other in there, and the page starts to get kind of fiddly and so I'll grab my Uhu glue stick and use it to kind of secure the paper to the fabric. So I'm going to get a couple of those on there. I'm not really sewing. I think I only go into the paper maybe two or three times on this and you'll see in the end. I'm going to go ahead and apologize. I do have a ton of videos at the end of this because I am in love with the detail of the crackles and the texture that I get in the end of this. And so I kind of went a little photo crazy with detail shots, but I hope you'll stick around and watch them because, oh my gosh, y'all, it's so yummy. <laughs> it's so, so yummy. So I am tying that off. Like I said, I cut out some of that, that sewing there. My needle came out. Oh, you know, things go crazy. Um, so I'm just going to trim that. Once I get a little knot on it, and that's it. You see, that's not too many stitches, just enough to kind of bring that black more onto that image. And I'm using my Liquitex matte gel medium. I'm not using the gold. Um, I didn't even actually think about it because it was going to be on the back. So why waste the gold? So I've got that on there, and I've got that. I'm going to play around with that sentiment forever, trying to figure out where it needs to go on here. And yeah, here, there, where. So finally, I'm just going to stick it down. And then I'm going to play with this page a little bit. I decide I think it needs another one of the crosses with the Stabilo. I think, yep, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It needed one there. And then I'm going to go around that, yep, yeah, with the white fine liner. And y'all see that? cross that's kind of there in the middle of the page somehow I didn't even notice that one never got circled with anything so at the end of this I'll I'll go back in and circle it with that white so I'm going to dry this and it's still bothering me so y'all I pull out that coffee and this is like I, the cherry on top of this once I go over some of this with the coffee it starts picking up all that texture that crackle paste that um the fine liners the the gesso that i put in there and it is divine and that pistachio there you see has started to kind of fade into the background it's not as noticeable it's just kind of almost ethereal with that face so it's really perfect so there's that I circled and that's it. So I'm going to give you all of these looks. If y'all have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me below in the comments. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. 
And y'all look at that texture. Oh my God, I love it so much. Okay, that's it. I hope y'all come back and see what I've got going on another time. Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye.